Hey guys, welcome back to the Girl Gone London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a dual UK and American citizen. And today we have another UK versus American differences in store. So some of these I've thought about because of recent events and some of them have just been on my list to talk about these unique differences that people don't always think about or talk about when describing the differences between the two countries. So the first one on my list was um, thought of because I was watching the Queen's funeral coverage. If you haven't had a chance to see any of it, definitely check it out. Um, the entire service and processional and planning and um, tradition is a really interesting watch. Uh, definitely uh, the UK really like coming together to show off the best of their tradition um, and paying respects to the Queen. But I was also watching coverage and someone was talking about how an American said, um, you know, we would never have this level of pomp and circumstance for the passing of a president while they were in power. Obviously, we would do something um, and the death of somebody like JFK obviously is a huge international event. Um, however, somebody pointed out that the difference there is that in the US, we do not have a single um, head of state or a single person that party that people on either side of the political spectrum can support. So if a president passes, um, it would be similar to a prime minister passing where that prime minister represents, technically they're supposed to represent the whole country, but really they represent the interests of their parties. And as we know in the US, it's pretty split 50-50. So you're always going to have about 50% of the country that doesn't always feel like they have um, elected that person or that they're happy that that person is in charge. Obviously in the UK, things are different because you can be pro-monarchy or anti-monarchy, but typically your political leanings, the political spectrum, the queen or now the king kind of um, is supposed to be apolitical. So people on either sides of the political spectrum could realistically look up to this person as the representation of the head of state or this, the kind of person that the country is putting out to the world saying, hello world, this person is kind of in charge, our representative. Um, so that was an interesting thing to be pointed out. Um, and it's very obvious once you think about it, but it does make sense as to why the US will never have that kind of person that could bring, you know, most people together. Um, whereas in the UK, we saw with the Queen, people from either sides of political parties, um, no matter what your political beliefs were, um, all sides of the spectrum could support the queen and did support the queen. Now I have to interrupt this video. Uh, you know it's coming. We need to thank our sponsor Skillshare for sponsoring today's video to help you learn all about the differences between the countries. I have been using Skillshare for the past six months to learn lots of other things. Um, the class that I'm taking most recently is called Introduction to Social Media Strategy, um, put together by Brian Peters, who actually works at Shopify, which you've probably heard of. I have to admit that I'm a millennial who doesn't really use social media that much personally, but I have to use it professionally for Girl Gone London. I have a Girl Gone London Facebook page, a Girl Gone London Pinterest account, um, and different social media platforms to get across um, my Girl Gone London content. Um, so I've been using this class to kind of brush up on my social media strategy. Um, but even if you're not interested in social media strategy, Skillshare is an online learning community with so many different options. You can learn calligraphy, um, things about gardening, cooking, business, investment, whatever you wanna learn. Um, there's probably a class for you on Skillshare. So the first 1000 people to sign up for Skillshare using the link below will get a one month completely free trial of Skillshare. So you can check it out, learn some hobbies, see if it's something that you want to continue through the winter months. So thanks again to Skillshare and now back to the video. Okay, so the next thing on my list is a language difference. So in the UK, it's more common to end a word like dream if you were doing past tense to say dreamt with a T. Same thing for learn. The past tense would be learnt with a T. In the US and in Canada, 
um, it's more common to end this with an ed. So we would say learned and dreamed, whereas here in the UK, it's more common to say learnt and dreamt. This applies to quite a few words when you take it to the past tense. And I know when I first moved here from the US, I remember thinking that actually, uh, like learnt was incredibly incorrect. I felt like, you know, growing up in the US, you're taught that's maybe like, um, like slang, it's not proper. Um, and here in the UK, it is proper. So if you hear somebody say learned versus learnt or dreamed versus dreamt, it's hard to like, remember how to say them now that I'm comparing them. Um, that is the difference. Both sides of the pond say those words differently when changing them to the past tense. The next is another language one has to do with the season coming up. Typically in the UK, it's called autumn. In the US, we do say the word autumn. We do know what autumn means. And you might be an American who does say autumn for the most part, but a lot of us say fall. We refer to it as fall, fall colors, fall leaves. Um, in the UK, I have not heard anybody refer to it as fall. I'm sure some people do, but autumn is much more common. Now, the next thing on my list has to do with like the major event happening in the autumn or fall. And in the UK, it's going to be bonfire night on November 5th, also known as fireworks night. Um, I have talked about this in past videos and I will do a whole bonfire night video this year, but that is the kind of celebration. Um, I mean, it's, it wasn't meant to celebrate the season, but if you think about the holidays that happen in a season, it is really the fall, um, holiday. Um, in the US, we do not have bonfire night or fireworks night on November 5th. Instead, we have Thanksgiving on the last Thursday um, in November. And it is definitely, for some families, even bigger than Christmas, but definitely our second to Christmas. Um, and like I said, depending on your family or religious beliefs, Thanksgiving could be the holiday of the year for you in the US. So um, those are the differences between the kind of big um, autumn or fall celebrations in those countries. Now the next difference has to do with chili powder. You'll need to know this if you are ever making a recipe using American measurements or American ingredients in the UK. You can often tell because you'll be finding a recipe online and they'll use American spelling or maybe American measurements and you'll try and translate it into UK measurements and it will all work fine until you get to the chili powder. Chili powder in the US is much less hot than chili powder in the UK. If a recipe says add four teaspoons of chili powder and you have a suspicion that it is an American made recipe, I would half that if not like cut it by fourths. Um, chili powder sold in the UK much hotter than what is known as chili powder in the US. So just be aware, depending on what kind of recipe you're using, because we have had instances of using American made recipes that we found online in the UK and using the exact amount of chili powder they said with UK chili powder, and it was so hot, it was inedible. So the more you know. The next difference also has to do with the kitchen. So if you're British, you've probably heard of single cream and double cream. If you're in the US, you probably have never heard that before. So um, the US does not have the exact equivalents of single cream or double cream, but we do have close enough equivalents to use as substitutes. In the US, the closest substitute to double cream would be heavy cream or whipping cream. And for single cream, it's recommended to use something like half and half. Um, and for our British friends watching, Half and Half actually is a brand name. Um, this is what Half and Half is. Um, so if you are, again, making recipes that go between either country or you're trying to make a British recipe in the US or vice versa, single cream and double cream are common in the UK. Everybody here in the UK will know what that means. In the US, look for Half and Half for single cream and like a heavy cream or heavy whipping cream for double cream. And the last things on my list just have to do with different phrases that are used. So a common phrase that is used in the UK is to pop round, like, oh, I'll pop around to your house after blah, blah, blah. Um, we don't really use this in the US that much. So typically we would just say, uh, come over, um, or we will maybe come around, but we probably wouldn't even say that we would say, 
will will come over. We're not really popping anywhere in the US. Here in the UK, everyone's popping everywhere. You pop to the shops, you pop over, you pop around. Um, the US, we will just say, typically will come over, um, like I said, not as much popping <laughs> happening. And the final difference for this video is the phrase shops versus store. So in the UK, I rarely hear people say store. Typically, you're going to the shops um, or you're going to the shop. In the, in the, which country do I live in? In the US, we would typically say store. We're going to the store. We're going to the grocery store. Um, we are, we would say we're going shopping, but we wouldn't necessarily say we're going to the shop or to the shops. Um, and in the UK, like I said, I haven't really heard that many people say, I'm going to the store. Most people say I'm going to the shop. So that's just another little difference that again, you don't realize until you live here for a long time um, that that is just a language difference that we use. I have talked in the past about how Brits mostly don't even say grocery store. That is kind of an Americanism. People would say um, the food shopping, food shops, or supermarket typically. Okay, so that brings me to the end of this video. Um, I would love to hear suggestions on future videos. Leave them down below. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.